Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Reseller Information Network. We are on episode 27. 27. We thank you guys for being here with us uh, this entire time. If you've just now joined the, the Reselling Information Network, we've got great news. We are on Facebook. We are streaming there now on Tuesdays as well from 9 to 12. You can come in, ask us any question about reselling. Uh, you might could ask us any question, but we'll definitely answer the reselling ones. We'll see about the rest of them. Uh, obviously, we have some filters, some NDAs that we can't uh, disclose. But uh, other than that, we will be happy to answer your questions and kind of show you what it means on the backside to work as a reseller. Because uh, Lord knows, you never know what you're going to see on a Tuesday, what we're going to be listing, what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be do researching. It's worth the watch. Come and hang out with us on Tuesdays from 9 to 12 Eastern. Uh, today, we do have a couple comments from some viewers over the past uh, few episodes. Uh, we have this guy, Blood, Sweat, and Sell. He dropped a comment in and was asking about listing on eBay. We're going to be discussing that later. We also had somebody in our chat today ask about that as well. Notorious Witness left us a comment saying, really good information, thanks. And he's actually back watching the re episode about is reselling sustainable. I encourage you guys, if you have not gone back and watched the library, it's there and it's full of great information. Uh, we also have Jenna left us a comment on our nooks and crannies short. It says it's nooks and crannies. You can't just say crannies by itself. We are trying to coin that phrase here. So uh, <laughs> crannies is, you know, that's where we keep that extra little tucked away inventory. Ascat Sujanowski says having a guy is very useful. Most of us savvy shoppers are should be. Now I need to check my supplies. Talking about the uh, keeping the right supplies in stock for reselling. And Commonwealth Flipper dropping a comment in, in the comment section about the wrongly identifying Big E Vintage Levi's. He said his grandpa's name, nickname was Big E. I did ask him if he wore the Levi's. So uh, <laughs> we, uh, we definitely, we do thank all you guys for watching. Uh, thank you guys for your support along this journey. And we look forward to many more episodes coming. Today's episode, we got some exciting stuff in store for you guys. We are going to be talking about how to list, at least how we do it, and hopefully give you some tips and hints of things that you can do. Each one of us do things just a little bit different, so we're going to give you a bunch of different perspectives when it comes to that. Uh, Tim also has some breaking news for us on the Etsy front, so we're going to go ahead and jump in that. As always, I'm joined by Leroy, Blood, Sweat, and Cell. Uh, he's coming to us live from the van today. And he's going to be sharing about his listing process. Cernok, as always, in the building. He's got a little extra uh, info that's going to be talking about feedback later in the episode. So stick around for that. And then Tim is bringing us that breaking news as we speak. I don't have my papers. I, I wish I had papers so I could like, like shuffle my papers shuffle. on the desk. Yeah, yeah. man. Straight uh, your well, tie before we go. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Reseller Information Network breaking news segment. Uh, today, we are going to be discussing some breaking news. Yes, the long-awaited arrival of Best Offer is now available on the Etsy platform. Now, not all sellers are going to have best offer available on all of their listings, uh, but we uh, have the beta program has been rolled out to certain individuals and sellers. I myself, as a longtime Etsy seller, have opted into the best offer uh, beta program. So now, and it's really interesting because you can either, you know, select it when you're doing your listing or there's going to be an option where you can just select all listings uh, so that it automatically goes into all the items that you already have listed. So, yes, best offer is being rolled out in the beta stages on the Etsy platform, uh, which I think is huge. Obviously, um, I think that's a big feature that um, most of us use on a day to day basis on the eBay platform. Uh, Grailed has offers, Depop has offers, Macari has offers. 
we all know about the Poshmark offers. Um, so yeah, Etsy now is is obviously the last platform that does um, allow offers. And while we're talking about it, I guess I might as well break the news. Also, whatnot has also integrated offers on whatnot as well. So if you're live streaming on whatnot and you have items in your buy it now section, you can also allow those to be uh, offers sent to you while you're streaming. Um, and you can counter those offers as well. I have yet to receive any offers on um, Etsy, but it definitely is changing the way that I am listing. Um, I used to list um, my prices and put everything on 30% off sale um, to kind of be like at the lowest point of an item that I would accept an offer on. So now I've put my sale percentage up to 20%, which leaves a little bit of room for offers now on the Etsy platform. So yeah, so breaking news, Etsy and whatnot have uh, joined the rest of the ranks of reselling platforms by allowing some sort of form of best offers. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And as, as it progresses and um, once I get an offer, I'll let everybody know and keep you up to date on how that is uh, moving along. So that is the uh, breaking news in the reseller world today. So shout out to uh, Etsy for catching up. There you go. Some people may think Etsy is still just handcrafted items, but I can tell you Tim has sold some of the wildest stuff on Etsy uh, that if anybody I know, like when, I, when he first said I sell on Etsy, actually – former Pyrex king of Etsy is uh, who Tim is. But, uh, man, when he talks about, hey, I sold this electronic or this golf club or this whatever, I was like, what? Etsy yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, I think it's something that you, everybody should uh, definitely, uh, you know, keep an eye on, and it'll be something we'll talk about later down the road. But, I mean, I've sold vintage hats on there. I've sold one of my most expensive vintage T-shirts sold on Etsy. Um, mm. That Garfield all over print T-shirt, sir. Yeah. Mark. I sold that on Etsy. Um, so, and then like uh, Eric was just talking about, I've sold uh, recently. I just put up an uh, Instagram post about some of the vintage electronics that I've been selling that I have all been selling on Etsy. So it's been uh, it's been pretty wild. Um, definitely something that everybody should kind of keep an eye out for. And uh, yeah, we'll probably touch base on some more Etsy stuff uh, later down the road. There are obviously pros and cons, and I'm not going to get into all that now because we know that I can talk, and I, it'll be in an hour. Yeah. So we're going to leave it at that. But, yeah, if you guys want to hear more about Etsy in the comment section, uh, just drop your questions in the comment section, and then we can address those in the future episodes. Yeah, we'll, we'll put a link down below as far as Etsy, too, because I, I do think that uh, if you are looking at signing up for Etsy, there's some stuff that we can put down below as far as that and what to do it all right so what we want to do now is jump into listing we had the question come up in in comments uh in previous episodes and also uh today um about listing like how do you guys list um you know i think this would almost qualify as a 101 and a 201 and a 301 and a 401 because there's depths to listing on on various platforms but listing on ebay in particular uh we all kind of use a different way of doing these and, and we're gonna let Cernot jump off right out of the gate and talk about um the five of the top things for him as far as things that are most important when listing so sure so, thank you um so the top five things that the top five things that was 10 but that's fine uh, the top five things that I really focus on when I'm doing listing is pictures, title, uh, description, item specifics, and price. That's pro you know that that that's a lot. You know that those are the five main things that you need to do. Now, when starting your you know when starting your uh, listing, you gotta do, you know you gotta do a few things before you like I have to do a few things before. I, you know, start listing, you know, I love just to take pictures first, get the pictures out of the way. I'm a, I'm a, cause I sell a lot of hats and or I, or I sell a lot of RA. I will go and take pictures of all my stuff first. Okay. So I don't start a listing unless I have the pictures, but sometimes if I'm at a thrift shop or something like that, I'll make, I'll make a little, like, uh, I'll, I'll make a draft. Okay, I'll do a self similar if I if I'm copying something, 
And I'm like, ooh, this is hot. I'll go ahead and do a self similar to get that started. So pictures first. Uh, all my pictures, um, I usually take them, you know, uh, on my iPhone. And then I have Photo Room, which will be which will be showing at a in a later episode. I gotta figure. I'm gonna screen record some stuff so you can kind of see it on my phone. So at a later episode, we're gonna be doing a Photo Room tutorial as well. Uh, but I, I, I spruce it up. I'm a big I'm a big proponent of having great photos because I think photos sell, especially because I I list on eBay, Poshmark, Macari, and Grail. I used to do Etsy too, Jim. Just got it just got too much. And Depop. I do Depop too. So I think the photo, you know, if you have like good photos, I shoot them out to every single site that I sell on because they look so good. So that's why I take the time with my photos. Next up, the title. You know, I'm I, I do my research before uh, you know, before I do my listing. So say I have like a weird hat, I'll just type in what it is to see if anybody else has it. Or see if it, you know, how many people have it or if it doesn't even exist. In my mind, it gives me kind of a price point then where I put on it, especially, especially hats. I have, I have different price points, like $15.99, $19.99, $24.99, $29.99, and it goes up from there. So it's like each, each hat, depending on style, the content, the condition, you know, I'm already thinking in my head, okay, this is what kind of price I want. And now if, if it's, if it's a hat that a lot of people have, then I'll kind of kind of run through the comps and see what it is, but you know, so you got you want to do your research before you, you know, actually sit down and do your listing. You know, looking at comps, looking at, uh, you know, sell through rate, all those those items. Now, once you do it long enough, you get fast at it, so you don't get you don't get stuck in a rabbit hole. Where you're like, okay, I've I've seen everything I need to see. I'm ready to do my listing. Okay, uh, so I already have my photos ready to go. We're going to jump into a listing, how I would do it. So let's just jump into it. I'm going to add it to the stream. There we go. Okay, let's um, let get bigger. There we go. And get y'all's reactions too. So here's here's kind of like uh, my eBay, uh, all, you know, my listings. And you can, you can see I have been on a hat run. So I've been doing a lot of these like fitted uh, hats, uh, dad hats, uh, strap back hats. Um, so, you know, you can kind of see like how many hats I've listed, you know, like there's hats, 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 hats. So what, what I will do. So a lot of times, um, I have so many hats done. I will look for a hat and, uh, you know, I, I have the picture of the hat. I'll look for another hat. That's very similar to it that I already have in my inventory. So I can do a self similar from my actual inventory because as we'll see, we'll go through it and, you know, I'm talking about item specifics, my description. All I've got to do is change a few things. That's why I like to, when I do my listing, I like to do like, all right, we're going to list 20 hats. So I'm in a hat mode. Okay. Or if I'm doing shoes, Hey, let's do 15 to 25 pairs of shoes. So, you, so that's, that's how I get into my modes is to sell, sell the same thing. I, right, right here behind me, I've got belts. I'm, I'm going to be listing belts. So I've got five different types of Western belts that I'm going to be listing. So I'm going to do it all at one time so I can get, go, all right, so, you know, list the first one. All right, let's just do a sell similar. The brand's the same. You know, maybe the style's a little bit different. So we can just make little bitty changes. We're not reinventing the wheel. I will tell you, it is rare. It is super rare that I just start a new listing. Just like bare bones, you know, going up here up here where I don't even see, I don't even know where it's at to, you know, like do a new listing, you know? So I usually just start where I'm at and, and, and it's just like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to pick a hat. So I have a, let's, let's see. I have a Ford motor company hat, which is perfect. Okay. A Ford motor company hat because I already have some more automobile hats. So let's scroll down a little bit. I know so we're going to scroll down a little bit. I, now, I've sold a bunch of these hats already, which is good. So here's perfect example. Volkswagen hat right here, a Fiat hat. I actually sold a Fiat hat today, a, you know, a couple of Volkswagen. So these are in that car genre and everything. So I have a Ford Motor Company one. So I'm just going to take this one right here, and we're just going to sell similar. 
All right. Now, uh, I don't, I use a Mac, so uh, I have iPhoto. So whatever, whenever I take photos on my phone, it automatically drops it to my iPhoto on my iMac. Uh, so what I just do is I take them, drag them to my other screen that I have here, uh, make sure they look okay, and they're ready to go. So we're going to remove all these, okay? And then I'm going to take my Ford Motor Company hat and and just pop it in there, okay? Now, I have a certain way that I like to present my hats. Um, I, you know, I love doing it kind of like this. Like, it's it, it, Sometimes it looks like it's like at a, you know, you know a three, four single, but more, it, 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 I always say it's like more like a, you know, closer to not, not that three fourths, especially because you want to show what's on the hat, but I like to tilt it a little bit. And then I take a front on picture, side, side, okay, inside the hat, back of the hat, okay? And then I like to show the brim of the hat to show how clean it is, and then I'll do the tag, okay? Then, I mean, it's pretty easy. Now, we're going to take, we're going to take our items that we've already done, and all, look, all the item specifics are already there. My description's already there. My pricing's already there. My shipping, you know, my... Uh, you know, my shipping, uh, the dimensions, the weight, my shipping costs. So everything's already there. So all we need to do is make a few changes. And, you know, so we'll start with the title. So we already did the pictures. We'll start with the title. So I'm going to say Ford Motor Company. And then I'm going to look at this. So Ford Motor Company. Um, I'm going to say Ford Motor, Co Motor Company logo. Uh, blue strap back baseball hat sometimes especially with the like now this what i'm wearing right now is a trucker hat but on the screen sometimes these could be classified as a dad hat and there's a lot of people that look for dad hats too so dad hat and then i use hat and cat because people like to use these words interchangeable so we'll just take a look at it okay yes it's a strap back okay and then sometimes, like, I'll look at the photos and be like, okay, this is in great condition. Now, I already made a list of what I have, um, like, what hats are new and what hats are – like, I, so I'll take all my new hats and, and take pictures of them first, and I'll do used hats. So all the hats I have right now are used hats, so I already know that everything's used, okay? So I can put excellent pre-owned condition. So – Guys, do you see anything else y'all would add? Yeah, I'm going to add truck. I'm going to add car. Okay? So, so, so some of these items, you know, just like just put in these little keywords at the end. I like to put little keywords at the end. So Ford Motor Company, Ford Motor Company, logo, blue, strap back, baseball, dad hat, cap, EUC, that stands for excellent use condition, truck, car i'm just gonna put auto and i'm at 78 characters right here out of 80 so i think that's a good title now what i'll do is usually this stuff right here like what i highlighted in the title i'm not going to use that in my description so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this i'm going to go to copy and i'm going to paste it down here already in my description okay so that's where i start working on my description already because i already know what I'm kind of doing. So Ford Motor Company, blah, blah, blah. excellent, barely worn condition. See pictures for details. Size, adjustable strap pack, a uh, strap back. OSFM, one size fits most. Hat will be shipped in a cardboard box. Now, uh, one thing I've been adding to, hat has been, let's see, cleaned, steamed, and reshaped. I do okay? that too. You know, just so they can see that, hey, I put I put a little work into this hat. Okay, so again, you don't have to tell the whole crazy story on the hat. You're just going to be like, bam, bam, bam. Here are the, you know, just the quick description and done. All right, so let's go back up and just fill out the fill out the um, item specifics. Now, here's a here's a great thing. You know, it already gives you the brand. So boom, Ford. Okay, baseball hat style. One size fits most. Color. We get. Let's change the color to blue. How hard is that? Okay. Features. Adjustable. Breathable. Lightweight. Keep that. Solid. All right. Here we go. Item specifics. 
or uh, uh, theme. 80s, 90s, cars, classic, retro, USA, vintage. Now, there's a little thing in my brain that tell, I like to do the theme because I've, I, I think sometimes eBay digs from the theme. So if you put something in there, maybe it's not in the title, maybe it's not in the description. I've seen things pop up, you know, you typing and a listing pops up, just pulling it out of the theme. So that's why that's why I like to do like anywhere from five to 10 themes. I mean, all it is is you're, you're running down and click, 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 click. And if you're listing the same items, a lot of these are going to match up to what you're doing. All right, occasion, casual, party, travel. Okay, I mean that's pretty easy. You know what? Let's add in workwear. All right, all right, fabric, canvas. Now here we go. We're going to go back up here. We're going to take a look at where is it made. Don't see where it's made. So uh, whenever I don't know where it's made, I'll just put unknown. Material is cotton. Uh, character truck. Just put in put something. I always put something like either the brand again. Or something that's relatable because you know if you're gonna, you know so I see people that put Batman well eh, not gonna really work so vintage this is a not a vintage hat season I put all seasons because you can wear hats all season long personalized no sign no handmade no drop down I don't mess with the California Prop 65 warning the model MPN I don't mess with that when I'm doing hats but if I'm doing shoes you know there's other things that you can put in there too your item condition pre-owned excellent barely worn condition. So it's in the condition, okay, and in the description, okay, using the same verbiage in the in the condition and the description. I think it's important because that's where someone can say, well, you said in the item condition it was never worn, but in the description it was barely worn. So, you know, you don't want to confuse your guests or your, your, uh, your customers. So pricing, your format, buy it now. So I'm going to price this hat at $24.99. What's going to happen is it's going to – I have a 20% uh, – offer so it's going to hit at twenty dollars so twenty dollars is going to be where it hits okay so and then i'm like yeah this hat's like eh, it's a ford hat it's cool it's not it, you know it's nothing special so you know what if i get a you know 15 or above uh offer i'm going to take it so allow offers um shipping is already in there eight ounces 10 by eight by six okay i charge 4.99 us uh ps first class okay we already have international shipping okay and then the preferences are right there. We're not excluding anything because I've already, you know, listed enough hats. Require immediate. Make sure this right here, right here. You see this right here? Require immediate payment when buyer uses buy it now. I always have that. And then guess what? We're going to hit list. And it's done. How cool is that? Very, very cool. Are you going to promote, promote that? Oh, there's an echo. Bam. Oh, it's, it's already, uh, it's already, um, in my promoted, like I had when I do my promoted listings, it this will funnel into it just like my sale, oh, everything, everything will funnel into it. So there's gotcha. a quick listing right there, that and, and that's how I do it. Now, guess what? I have eight more hats to list. It's you know, I did a lot of talking. You know, how long did that take? Two, three minutes. I, I can get hat listings done in two minutes, so in, in 10 minutes, I can have five hats listed. So I know that we're going to talk about, you know, each one of us at some point. Um, so for the viewers, your preference, because you sell on multiple platforms, your preference is to always list first in eBay because you have the templates and then cross list from there, right? That is, is that absolutely how you do it? correct because, because what happens is on eBay, eBay is the only place you're going to find the 20% off, okay? Mm -hmm. Because... My philosophy on cross-listing is, hey, I have it set up automatically with Flip. Okay, I do. I, I have a, uh, uh, you know, I don't use Flip for cross-listing. I use Vendu for cross-listing, but for Flip, I use their Poshmark Share. Okay, and part of the Posh, Poshmark Share is if someone likes your item on Poshmark, I have it set up to send them an automatic twenty percent offer. So that twenty percent offer automatically lines up with eBay. Now on Grailed and Depop, no, on, on, Grail, on Depop, I only put a few things, just kind of like kitschy type stuff. But on Grailed, those, those people will pay up. So I just leave it because over time, after a, after a month of bumping to get your listing back up to the top, okay, every seven days you bump, then you can, you can go down 10%, okay, and it bumps it back up. And then you wait another week, it bumps it down another 10%. So I'm already building in that discount 
into all my other platforms by doing that. And I, I think it works. I, I, I've had great luck with it. So, yeah, you know, it just keeps it all together. We'll look at it um, too. Like the the link for Flip and Vindu will be down below if you're interested in that. Um, also, Tim, I know Crosslist and the link for List Perfectly is down there as well uh, for those guys. So if you're just starting out, you're not crosslisting, and you're like, man, maybe I'd like to do a little bit of that. Uh, those are some easy. Uh, Flip probably has the lowest barrier of entry, meaning it's free. Um, but like Vindu and let's perfectly are a lot more in depth and uh, do a lot more and have more processes, but flip does allow you to share Poshmark. Um, and that's, I turned Cernak onto that a while back cause it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. So uh, check those links out down below. Uh, Leroy, we're going to jump in and see like, what is your listing process sound like? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, mine is, mine is a little different guys. Um, we all know this. It's not a secret anymore, but because I've, I'm not an office person. Um, growing up, I've been a laborer my whole life. So I don't know how, anything about computers. I probably don't write more than two sentences a month, and I'm just being real with you guys. Um, and just just I could just be who I am. Just In my faith, the Lord gave me the strength and showed me how to actually work online doing typing and listing stuff that I normally would never even give myself a, sh a shot to even do. So when you guys sit there and you say, I can't do it, I don't have time, it takes me longer than it takes any of you guys to do it because I have, because I, I, I can't spell anything. I can't spell anything. So I have to talk it into the, talk it into the computer. Um, just real quick on that part, just so I don't go too far. If you have a Mac and a lot of the newer computers, my Mac is a function that I set up. I press the FN button and it will record whatever I say. Um, you know, it will record and then I can put it into my listing. So the, the format of how I do my listing is, of course, you guys know I sell tools. So a lot of my stuff I will clean. I'll clean it, sort of stage it to, you know, where, where, where I want to, how many lots I'm going to do. Like today on the show, I was getting my lots ready so I could take the pictures. So I'll do my, my cleaning and stuff. Then I'll put it in my photo booth and um, I'll take pictures on my phone. I take pictures on a, uh, an old phone that I have. Just in case you guys didn't know, you can use, I use it. It works for me. An old phone that's not online. So I have an old Mac, I mean, I have an old iPhone that's not online. It doesn't have any service, but I still can take pictures with it and I can still download it to my um, MacBook Pro. So just in case you guys didn't know, oh, I need a new camera or whatever, you can use an older phone. I do it. It works for me. Um, if you ever have any issues, ask me and I'll tell you how I do it. Maybe that will help. Um, but I take pictures off of a, a phone that's offline. And it's a it's Apple product, so it's just plug and play pretty much. I put it into um, I put it into my com my computer, and then I'll have them there when I do my listings. As of doing my listings, like I said, I go in. I I do very very similar to what Sonak does. Is I do um, I said um I was doing so good. Okay, I do I I do um. I go into the listing. I type in whatever the item is. So if it is a sledgehammer head, I'll type in sledgehammer head made in Brazil. And then I'll go and I'll look and see who, where it's, if it's sold. I don't look at, um, I don't look what's listed because I don't want to copy a listing that's already listed. So I'll go what's sold. And if you guys go, if you're on the, on the computer, I don't know about on your phone. If you scroll down a little bit, it says sell one like this. It's push duh, sell one like this. Okay. So I, so I sell one like this, and it gives me it been done. It's just like what Sirlock said. With me, I have to be very careful of making sure the, the wording is very is right. I make sure that all the words are right, and there's no words that I'm putting in this listing that I don't have in my item because I'm stealing somebody else's listing. So that's very important to me. 
Um, I do want to jump out of this. And Sonak said, Sonak said something. I was waiting for him to come back. And Sonak said, a li- I have a little thing in my head. That guy has nothing little in his head. That guy has <laughs> big things, a lot of things in his head. Okay. I don't know if you guys noticed, but he was scrolling down on his listings. There wasn't a listing that had under 70 characters. Okay. <laughs> I hope you guys were paying attention to that. When he did his, when he filled out his, I filled, I've done a few with him. When he filled out his item Pacifics, he might have missed two. And I think California law was the only one he missed. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't mean to jump and pick out my friend, but he, he, he's very thorough. I've worked with him on a couple of listings. He's very, very thorough. I am, a, I, I'm laid back a little bit. There's no wrong or right way. You have to figure that out for yourself to see. Is it selling that way? If it's not selling that way, then you have to change it and do it a different way. Um, so, so I what I do is when I when I, once I figure out what listed I'm using, I I talk to text my um, my description. I have a, a my description. I have a um, it's it's like a dragon post. So I have a something written out like my policy type, and then I can take that and I can slide that in. So that takes care of that part. Um, and then, you know, because I'm using a listing that already has um, been sold, I base my price off of that and I drop some money off. Um, and I know that I'm not copying something that's up because that listing has already been sold. You know, you just, you, you have to do it your way. If you do it on the phone, if you do it on your, your laptop, However you do it, you're going to do it your way and what works best for you. You, you can't say, oh, well, Sonak does it this way or Leroy does it this way. We all do it different. We're just giving you an idea of what works for us. We're not saying we're professionals, but we've been doing it for a long time. So, you know, do, do what's best for you guys. Get a little bit of each one of us and see what works um, for you. And you sell stuff. It, it, it don't matter how you list it. Um, if it's not selling, it's not selling. So you got to switch the stuff up a little bit. But after that part, guys, I'm pretty much all set. That's all I have to say. Um, I don't want to get any more excited. But, um, you know, that's 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 how I do it. Thanks. Leroy also used his his motto there. If you caught what he was saying, he said that uh, he sees what's out there and he prices a little under that. Cause, cause why, Leroy? Why do you do that? Um, because there's a thing called. Um, I saw it on a commercial one time. It's called sell it low and let it go. Yeah. Um, so you know, yeah, that's that's what I do. No, it's not from a commercial, but yeah, I just <laughs> it I, needs to be. It, it does, but it's it's crazy, guys, because. Sometimes you don't know what to price it for. You guys look. Thank you for Eric. Eric just wanted to get me back up. He wanted to get me going again. That's all it was. <laughs> I want to get that heart rate up. That's what we want to do. That's all it is. But you know, you you guys look and you'll see something, and it's selling for thirteen dollars. They say thirteen dollars, but eight of them, eight eight of them have only sold for eight bucks. Guys, don't try to get the thirteen dollars, because if you go into sold. Eight of them sold for eight. So guess what? Put it up for eight. Like, you know, you can put it up for whatever you want, but that's what I base it on, and it's already done for me. So I don't – Some sometimes I don't know what this stuff is worth. I have no idea. I don't comp. When I go somewhere, guys, I pull out my phone if I'm spending over $20 for an item. If I'm not spending over $10, $20 for an item, I don't comp it. I – I go to Chesney and I, I shop all the time and I never come. I go to these auctions. I never come. Um, when I come home, I get excited or my head goes down. But I pay $2 for it. <laughs> you know, something I paid $2 for, it might only be worth 8 Some of you guys wouldn't list it. I'm still going to list it. But the other thing is going to sell for $58 for a doorknob. And I, and I would have been happy with 10 There you so, go. 
I can attest to that because Leroy ran laps around me at the flea market when I went with him both times. Like he done went up and back and up and back, and I'm I'm still down at the bottom row, like trying to figure it out. But uh, yeah, I I definitely do see, you know, and like Leroy said, don't let it, obstacles take you out of your game. Like I mean, don't let things say like, well, I can't do it because. Like, really, can't's just an excuse, right? Like, that's all it is. Because uh, you can. There's a way. may take a little bit more work, but there's a way. So, we'll jump right in here with Tim, because I'm sure he does it different than all of us. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I, I, I did want to just double down on a couple of things that, uh, obviously, both both of these guys said. Um, first, doubling down on what Leroy said, that this is not us telling you this is how to do it. This is us telling you how we do it. Um, I think one of the biggest things that Leroy also said was, you know, taking a little bit from each of us and kind of making it your own. Cause that's how I do things. Um, I'm always listening. Um, I'm at, I, you, Cernok will tell you, I've asked Cernok a million questions over the time uh, that I have known him. And I'm kind of like, you know, I, I like to pick people's brains because I think it's important to not necessarily get stubborn and, and be stuck in, in your way because it the game is always changing and you know the the layouts on these platforms are always changing they're adding new things they're getting rid of some things so it's very important to remember that and the, you know my my phrase like Leroy's phrase my phrase is adjust and adapt um I, I always talk about that and I think it's super important because the only way you're going to be, you know, on, on, on the forefront of things is to, to be able to adjust and adapt. So I'm always changing my techniques. And obviously, because of my circumstances and, and my where my living and my business are so separate, uh, sometimes it's a little bit difficult for me. So I kind of have to do things a little bit different. So I basically am a cross lister um, by trade here at this point. Uh, I I list everything on every app, applicable platform. Um, so if it can go on a platform, it goes on that platform. Uh, so I do all of my listings in list perfectly first. Um, now, majority of my items that I sell are very unique items. Um, so the thing that I do first and foremost is I do my research first um, and doing my research it is basically helps me title my items because a lot of times I don't have an item that is just has a name or whatnot. So Okay, so like for example, like this doesn't have like, a name or on it. It doesn't have a title on it. It doesn't have a tag on it. So like I have to research this. So when I'm researching this, the same sort of words and, and, and that I use to research it are going to be the same sort of words that I use in the title because that's how I'm finding this item. So I kind of look at it from a backwards perspective. Like when I'm listing something, how would I search to find that item if I wanted to buy it or if I wanted to research it? And that's kind of how I, I decide on how to title my items. So obviously, you know, pictures, very important. The process for me kind of changes. I generally used to do clean everything first, photograph everything, and then title everything and, and list it like that. Just this last week, I kind of did things a little bit different. I did the research and the and the drafted everything first. So once I did the research on a particular item, I then drafted it. So title, description, and all of that information, I kind of had an idea of where I was at with price. And then I went and I cleaned everything, took photographs, and I take all my photographs on my phone and then dump them onto Google and Google Photos and then um, – I, I edit the photos first, obviously, and then I download from Google Photos to my computer, and then I just uploaded all the pictures for each item in List Perfectly that went with the listings. And then from there, now I have all these items drafted in List Perfectly, so then I just go down the list and I, and I start cross-listing. So I, when I have an item, I take that item from List Perfectly and I cross-list it on every platform at once, so it has all the tabs for all the platforms. So when a listing goes up, it goes up on every single platform all at once at the same time. Um, I don't like to kind of because then I, if I don't do it that way, then I lose track of what's on which platform and, and so forth. 
Uh, so I put everything up on the platforms all at the same time. Um, and then as far as uh, titles go, I'm very specific with my titles, much so doubling down on what Cernok did. Um, I, you know, I basically do vintage um, and then I'll do the company first. So like this is going to be Westmoreland glass. So this is going to be a vintage Westmoreland glass. And then I'll either do, depending on how it's, listed in general like if if like the, the definitive term uh if i'll go color or or the the um pattern next so if it's a t-shirt you know if, say this is a i had just sold a vintage land rover t-shirt single stitch made in the usa you know then the size and so forth so for something like this it would be vintage westmoreland glass pink dolphin koi fish candlestick and then, you know, I'll add on my keywords at the end. Um, like if you're doing, if I'm doing anything uranium glass, I'll put out the, the official title and then I'll add uranium glass. If it's Vaseline glass, I'll add Vaseline glass and, and so forth. Um, and I, then as far as my description goes, uh, I'm very cautious of my descriptions. Okay, so for me, I don't accept returns. I know I'm different than everybody else and I know that on on eBay, there's no such thing, blase, blase. But I do not accept returns. That's just that's how I've always done things. That's how I roll. I feel like it's easier that way for me. I weed out the 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 scammers. Okay, so, but it, it you can always, as I just stated, you can always be forced a, a return upon you for an iNAD. So for me, I'm very descriptive. I take photos of every possible angle, no matter what the item is, front sides, both sides, backs, tops, bottoms. Everything gets a photo. If there's anything that is like uh, any sort of damage or anything like that, it gets a separate photo in itself. Um, I list the damage or or any sort of – because w with some things, there's going to be – not everything is mint condition. That's the first thing you have to remember. If, if it does not have a tag, if it is not in a sealed box, I will never, ever, ever list anything as new. Everything is always used or pre-owned. 100% of the time, and if it's an electronic and it does not fully function, like it might power on, but it, you know, there might be a little something, it's used for parts. 100% all the time, I always, I try to protect myself. Murphy's Law, what can go wrong, will go wrong. So I always list things as in vintage condition. If it's a vintage item I'm selling, I list it in vintage condition. If it's excellent vintage condition, and then I'll put anything that, that, that needs to be pointed out right after that. Measurements. I measure everything because I don't want to have to go back and, and re-measure, go waste time to find something to measure it. Whether it's a piece of clothing, a piece of glass, uh, everything gets measured. Um, I know I've seen people talk about they don't put measurements in it and they still have these crazy 90-day totals. Good for them. For me... Everything gets measured, okay? I do not want to have to worry about it later down the road. So everything gets measured. All the measurements go in there. And I mean measurements. So I measure the height. I measure the width of the base, the width of the top. Because there's always going to be somebody like, well, I was wondering what size candle will fit in that candlestick. Boom, it's already in there. They are, they're sending me messages asking me because they're not used to people putting it in their descriptions. And all I got to do is tell you, hey, it's in this description. So always put your measurements. Uh, I always put my measurements. You don't have to, but I suggest it. Uh, so and then as far as pricing goes, on the same thing as Cernok, I put my prices in uh, to reflect a 20% discount once it catches into the sale. I promote everything. Every single listing on eBay gets promoted at 9.6%. I do fluctuate with my prices on uh, Grailed and Poshmark uh, and sometimes on Etsy, uh, different than eBay. Uh, and all that gets done when I finish the listings once I uh, export everything out of list perfectly. Uh, so that's basically my process there. Um, obviously, shipping we've talked about in previous episodes. If you guys want to go back and look at any of those episodes, we kind of go into a little bit more detail on how each one of us, um, you know, prices out our shipping uh, as far as that goes. So that's my process. But I am always changing my process based upon uh you know the the situation i'm in whether i get a big haul a small haul stuff like that uh if i'm doing another thing sports cards too never list your sports cards as new never list your sports cards as new 
Um, unless it's a slab, and then obviously they'll give you a bunch of drop down to um, things, uh, item specifics that you can apply to that stuff. But never, ever, ever list your sports cards that are raw as new. Even if you took it out of the pack and you put it in a case and you took a picture and listed it, never, ever, ever list your sports cards as new. Um, so I think that's pretty much you know the overall schematic of things the way that I do it. Um, but sometimes I take my pictures first and then do everything. Sometimes I draft first and then take pictures. Um, it, it's always changing. But I think the the main thing is is you know the top five items that we talked about. Obviously, your titles, uh, your pictures, um, you know, your item specifics, your description, and your pricing. Um, you know, you want to be competitively priced. Uh, so you, you got to, you know, keep an eye on that. I saw somebody uh, in one of these Facebook groups recently. They were wondering why they weren't selling things. And a lot of people pointed out that their prices were priced too high. Um, and then sometimes and in the description, they were talking about how they were a reseller in the description. That is don't do that. Don't tell people that you're a reseller yeah, in the yeah, description. Yeah. Um, I, I think your description should be detailed, thorough not a one sentence and not a novel. You got to find that median in there. You want to get to the meat of the bones. Uh, there doesn't really need to be a lot of beating around the bush. Um, you don't want to be vague, but you also don't want to tell your life story. Tim, obviously, like, I mean, everybody kind of has a different way of doing things. And, and we that is one of the great things about having the, the four of us together is because we all look at things from a different point of view and all try things. I will say this, most of us are pliable to a degree. Like if, if there's a better mousetrap, we're not going to be like, nope, this is the only way. Like uh, most of us are like Tim's statement of adapting. Um, you know, for me, I list mobily. I'm going to show you guys here in a minute how all that works. Uh, I have not, I literally have listed, I think one item in the history of reselling on eBay, uh, on the computer. Uh, I don't even know when Sarnock's showing me the computer. Like I've never even seen that screen before. Like I, I, I literally do everything on my phone. Um, and I've listed in the store. I've lifted, listed in the thrift store. I've listed at a, a state sale before. Like I, I've done a, all that kind of stuff. Um, and there are things I know that I've improved on from what I used to. Um, for me, when I started listing, one of the things I've improved on used to, I would start my listing and then start doing the research a little deeper and say, wait a minute, this item does not sell. I've done put five, 10 minutes of work into this thing. Like I've cleaned it up. I've took my pictures. This item don't sell. <laughs> like, <laughs> I need to get rid of it. Like it's, it's not worth my time. I've already wasted time on it. So now I do start with research majority of the time first. Like I want to, I want to look it up and see, because, you know, for me, just like right now I'm dealing with, if you guys are with us on Tuesdays, I've got tons of radio parts. I've got tons of computer parts. I don't know anything about any of that stuff. I'll, I'll be honest. Like my computer knowledge, I turn the thing on, I do the app and the processes. Like I, that's, that's what I do. Like I've never took a computer apart, never had a, an inclination to do that. I don't know what these parts are. I don't know what the radio parts are, but I do know now yeah, I research it. And if I can't find it within a certain amount of time, I'm going to lay it all out on the table. I'm going to take a picture of it and say, Hey, this is a lot of radio parts. And that'll be my listing. This is a lot of radio parts, ham radio, this radio, that radio. Um, that's how I've done it. I could crank out a bunch of listings, but these guys have rubbed off on me on the quality of listing uh, because I can tell you when, when we first started listing and loafing, these guys will tell you we would do a session listing as loafing. I'd be like 30, 40, 50 items. Like I'm just cranking them through, like taking pictures. Like my description literally was the same thing as the title. That was it. <laughs> like that's all you got if it copied down below that's all you get i'm sorry like that's just how i, I would do it and then sarnak told me about this blue lightning bolt and he said hey there's a blue lightning bolt there that when you turn that thing blue it helps and dude i was shocked when i started doing that item description the specifics that they're asking for to make that thing blue 
some of them still don't make any sense to me. Like why they would ask, you know, if you're talking about a shirt, and they're like, what kind of motor does that use? I, I don't know how, why that would you know, be a thing. But, you know, there, there's things that you do look at and say this may not apply. But as many of those things do apply, because what it does help is the backside algorithm, the mysterious algorithm. But it does give other search components that they can find your listing on. So, okay, next up, we've got Cernok is going to talk to us a little bit about feedback, and that's our reselling hack of the day. Yeah. This is a great, this is a great little thing that just just saves you time. Okay, I'm. We're gonna do this. We're gonna make this super easy. Okay. Now, if you've made it this far and you're watching us and everything like that, you're gonna we have this. We're gonna have this link right there at the bottom, right there. The, the link you're seeing right there. Scroll down. It's gonna be the first link you see. Okay, and it's gonna say how to set up your automated feedback, and it's gonna give you this link. You're gonna you're gonna be logged into your eBay store. You're gonna click this link on our video. It's gonna open up your eBay store, and this is what you're gonna see. And this is super simple, okay? Very, very simple. It's under your selling preferences. All you have to do is click automa automatically leave positive feedback. Now you have two options. Leave feedback after a buyer has paid for the item. I don't do that because you, you never know about returns or if they're unhappy or whatever. No, I do. Buyer has paid for the item and left me positive feedback. And that's it. And that's how you can that's how you can leave feedback easily. You know, your your rep, you know, you get good feedback, you leave good feedback. It's so easy, okay? And that's all you gotta do. If if people don't leave you feedback, I ain't leaving them feedback. Why should I leave them feedback then? Okay? So it's it, it's it, it, you know, it goes both ways. So this is the easiest way to do it. The link is provided right there. You click two things, no, you hit three things. You click automatically leave positive feedback, buyers paid for the item and left me positive feedback and save and you're done. Do you get to choose what you want to say? Yes. What? Yes. Yeah, you just hit save right there. There's also one that says edit store comments, store comments, and you can actually uh, make custom one if you want. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You can, you can, you can make like four. I, I have four different, uh, four different, here, let me, let me, let me see. Right there, bam. So I have four right here. Five. I have five right there. And you can you can put in whatever. And what it does is it uh it rotates them. Oh okay. okay. So bam, we'll save it like that. Jason has been saved, and we're done. That's pretty easy, that, right, guys? That that is that's like, that's easy. And the link's gonna be down there below, and you're gonna hit it. Do, 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 do. It's gonna take you like thirty seconds, if, if that. <laughs> and, like, yeah. and I'm gonna sit back and take care of my feedback. Now, the only thing is, if you purchase something off of eBay, then then you have to leave. If if you wish to leave feedback for your purchase, you have to do that manually. Right. It doesn't automatically do that. So yeah, that's it. Honestly, one of the easiest hacks that we've come across, uh, right. for sure. <laughs> everything, everything, the link's there. Yeah, you roll into it. You, you know, for us, and, and you think about feedback, it may or may not. I, I used to get so frustrated because originally I had automatic feedback for everybody, and then somebody would follow return. I was like, you got to be kidding me, man. I left this guy positive feedback. He's yep. like being nasty towards me. So, yeah, I, I went to the uh, – to that type of feedback. I'll leave you positive if you pay first, if you pay. <laughs> and then if you uh, then if you leave me good feedback, then it's a mutual situation. Yeah. I had to explain that to a, uh, one of my customers. He's like, uh, you haven't left me feedback yet. I said, uh, we have it automatically set up where, you know, and I think he's like, wait, what? I said, yeah. once you give me positive feedback, you will instantly have positive feedback from me. Yeah, automated. It's one of those things where you can just take your foot off the pedal for a second. Like that's a cruise control situation when it comes to uh, eBay. I wish other platforms had similar, but not every one of them does. 
So there we go. Guys, we do appreciate you for watching today. Uh, do check out the links down below. There are plenty of uh, tools that we use. Um, that's why they're down there. They're not just there for looks. Uh, they're there because it's actually stuff that we use. Uh, we've talked about a few today. We've talked about Flip. We've talked about Vindu. We've talked about List Perfectly. You know, we have all these all these tools available down below. You can check out those things. You also, look at other things that we use in our day to day business. Uh, some tools otherwise. So leave us some comments in the questions down below. Those things are always greatly appreciated. Go to Facebook Reseller Information Network Group, and you will see us streaming there live now on Tuesdays. And also, we'll be dropping some videos periodically. Check us out through the week. We will be dropping some more videos. Do thank you guys once again for joining us. And we're going to let the guys give you a little adios. Leroy. I want to say thanks, everybody. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit or a lot of bit or some a bit or, so, or something a bit or a cranny or a nook or something. <laughs> and we do have a new word of the day, and I will let Tim introduce that new word of the day for today. But thanks, guys. Uh, we really appreciate it. Please make sure you leave comments in the uh, – down in the in – the, the bottom there and if you guys message any of us on any platforms and we don't get back to you it's not because we're being rude it's because we're trying to live life and do the rest of the business like we're supposed to so you might have to shoot that message again thanks guys sir not yeah hey hopefully y'all learned something today listen again i cannot stress this enough we are all individuals we have our own way of doing things eric's listening from the phone i've tried it it's comfortable. I can put, kick my feet up, you know, kick my feet, kick my feet there, feet are long. Yeah, kick my feet up and listen to my phone. I've tried it. I've done it. Something about just the computer for me works. So that's what we're trying to tell you. We're showing you all these things. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, doesn't make you a bad reseller. You know what I'm saying? Just because you don't, you know, you, you can't, you know, maybe you, you don't do your titles the right way or your pictures the right way. We're just showing you how we do it, how we, you know, how I've been successful in my eBay journey. So that's all we're doing. We're just trying to show you these like little things that help me out, help Eric out, help Leroy out, and help Tim out. So hopefully you'll learn something today. And that's what we're just trying to do. Just, you know, you know, little little nuggets, little nuggets to build up, build up your pot of gold. So. All right, Tim, take us out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you guys again. For joining us on another awesome, fantastic ride down the reseller information network. And I'm not just saying that because Leroy's in a van. It's always a ride here at the RIN. Big shout out to each and every one of you who have been watching us on Tuesdays when our when these videos come out. Big shout out to everybody who's dropping comments. And most importantly, do not forget to drop those questions below so that we have some more ammunition to help you guys become the best possible resellers that you can. Uh, we are getting close to a hundred and almost 200,000 7-Eleven points just for everybody who's been asking me for an update on the 7-Eleven points. Uh, this has been fantastic. Stay tuned for more breaking news. Stay tuned for more reseller hacks, more deep dives, more 101s. And remember, this is not the way you have to do things. This is just another way that you can do things. And uh, don't forget to tell a friend and tell a friend about R-I-N reseller information network boop 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 boop